Hello everyone, this is Dimitri Kusathanis, host of the Greek American Hour with Dimitri that plays right here on WZIG every Wednesday at 8 p.m. and Saturdays at 4 a.m. for the benefit of our listeners in Greece. Our very special guest is Congressman Gus Villarakis, who represents Florida's District 12 in the U.S. House of Representatives. Prior to that, Gus served in the Florida House of Representatives. Gus is considered locally as political royalty, as his father Michael held the office prior to him, and he was held in very high esteem. Uh, Gus is the grandson of Greek immigrants who owned a bakery in Tarpon Springs, where I understand Gus worked. Gus grew up in Tarpon Springs, and he currently resides in Palm Harbor. Gus has been a very good friend of mine for many years. His son Manoli was a student of mine at Carwise, a very good student, straight A, and I have the honor also of serving on Gus's advisory board for the past six years. Congressman Villarakis, welcome to WZIG. Well, thank you, Dimitri. It's really an honor to be on the program, and I really appreciate that uh, you're doing this because there's a real need in the community to have a Greek American hour. And uh, it's an honor and uh, a privilege for me to be your guest today. Well, th- thank you very much. I had mentioned you you worked in your grandparents' bakery growing up. Absolutely. And can you tell us what your, your role was? Well, I, uh, I worked with my grandfather uh, after school. Uh, every day I would walk from uh, the Tarpon Springs Elementary School and, and Tarpon Springs Middle School. Uh, at that time, they were close to the uh, downtown area of Tarpon Springs. The, the bakery was on Pinellas Avenue, and uh, I would help him run the store in the afternoon. And on the weekends, I would help with the, bake the bread or whatever they wanted me to do. But it was a wonderful experience because I had the chance to, to speak. A lot of the customers were Greek-speaking, and I had a chance to, to learn the language and uh, you know, the customs, the traditions. Really, it was a, a wonderful experience for me. Very good. And did you have a a specialty item that you made, or what was... Well, I can't say that, but uh, I I watched a lot, but uh, again, uh, most of the work was in the store, which was good because, uh, you know, I got to, uh, again, speak Greek to uh, a lot of the customers and also, you know, learn business, the business aspect of it. And uh, it's just, uh, it's been a great thing for me to to be able to communicate in, in, of course, uh, two languages. Your Greek upbringing, how did it influence your going into politics? Well, you know it's in our blood. To, uh, to All Greeks, most Greeks love politics. And uh, I, I always loved politics from a child. I, as a matter of fact, I, I just followed it ever since the second grade. And of course, my dad was in, uh, in uh, government for many years as well. Uh, but uh, influencing me, uh, it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, and uh, my, my Greek upbringing, the heritage, uh, the traditions, the, the work ethic, uh, and, and the loyalty, uh, it, it's just uh, integrity. Uh, that's what we were taught uh, as children, you and me, Dimitri. Uh, and then also going to Greek school uh, had a great effect because I can communicate with, uh, with Greeks in, in Cyprus, citizens of Greece and, and Cyprus uh, as well. So Greece and Cyprus, and then when the diplomats come over, uh, prime ministers come over, I go over there, and uh, I, as I, I co-chair the Hellenic Caucus and also the Hellenic Israel Alliance. I, I founded that a couple of years ago. And uh, it's been, it's, <laughs> I tell you what, I wouldn't change it for the world uh, to have this kind of heritage. Uh, we're very, uh, God gave us a gift. And I know it sounds a little bit uh, arrogant, but uh, it's true. Uh, uh, the Greeks are very special people, but we have a duty and an obligation to uh, be good citizens and uh, give back to our communities. And uh, that's what I was taught as a child. Very well said. Currently in Greece, there's the economic situation is uh, in, in need of improvement. If you were a politician there, serving in the Greek parliament, would you have any suggestions that you could, could make? I think that uh, long term, uh, what, what I think we should, uh, what Greece should do, and of course I'm limited in what I can do over here, even though I chair both those caucuses, uh, and it's for the people of Greece to decide who their leaders are going to be. But uh, I think foreign investment is, is key to create an environment uh, to bring in businesses. Uh, 
and then that way it's a pro-growth policy and uh, we create jobs that way uh, and, and I think Greece would, would thrive. Uh, so incentivizing businesses from around the world to, uh, to move to Greece and, uh, and making it easier for them to come, cut, cut a lot of the regulations, the red tape. Uh, I just think that there's so much potential. Uh, the location is outstanding, the, the country is beautiful. Uh, and, uh, and I just see a lot of potential. Now I know they have some problems now, some real serious problems and I know the people are hurting. And we pray and we do everything we possibly can from, from this country. And I, I took a U.S. delegation to Greece. I led the delegation in October. And uh, I was very pleased at that time what I heard as far as the progress that's being made now. I know that uh, things have changed to a certain extent. But again, we're here, we're not here to elect the leaders or make a preference on who we would like to, to run the country, because we're Americans, we live here, but uh, we're available to, to help in any capacity. But foreign investment, like uh, trying to lure manufacturing there? Manufacturing, exactly. I, I just see so much potential, so much potential for, uh, for growth. Uh, and uh, again, you have to create the, the climate uh, for it, uh, to attract businesses, incentivize businesses uh, from around the world. Uh, here in the United States, I know that uh, the, the Secretary of uh, Development, Minister of Development, has come over uh, in the last couple of years and uh, actually talked to Greek Americans about investing in Greece. So, uh, you know, I, again, I see a great, uh, and the tourism has picked up tremendously. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I know that uh, you have at least a half a million visitors from uh, Israel uh, every year. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a beautiful country. Uh, as you know, Dimitri, I just Absolutely. missed you in Mykonos uh, by a couple of weeks uh, in 2013. Uh, I, I think you had left and, and I got there for... I was there for four days, and boy, I had a great time. Well, you got my family. Come yeah. back now. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm ready. Believe me. <laughs> so, foreign investors, but using a local labor force. Absolutely. Obviously. Okay. Absolutely. That's how you create jobs, and then that's what we should be doing here too: creating the the business climate, the environment, because uh, businesses expand, they grow, and they innovate. And uh, you, but you have to have the proper business. Uh, climate for that to happen and then they, the revenue increases and uh, of course uh, you know they have big problems over there uh, and and as we do here in the United States. I'd like to ask you next about the issue in Cyprus the illegal Turkish occupation uh, it's been 40 years and there, there's been a lot of talk and you've used some very strong words on the floor of the house yet nothing ha has been done to me, it seems that we have a little bit of a double standard as, as a country because Iraq invades Kuwait, we go in there, we get rid of, we get them out, but Turkey has continued to illegally occupy the sovereign ally of Cyprus, and the one country that can do something about it, the United States, do something about it without any gunfire, that is, they haven't done any, anything. Well, yet. I think that, uh, Dimitri, we have a, the U.S. has not tried hard enough. Uh, you know, they mention it, uh, the State Department does in their talks, uh, but uh, we, don't, we don't put pressure on Turkey like we should be. Uh, they haven't been good allies uh, over the years. Look what's happening now uh, with what the ISIL uh, and the, the Syrian border, what have you. We can't, we can't depend on them at all. Uh, and, and Greece has been a strong ally. Cyprus has been a strong ally. As a matter of fact, uh, you know, I form, as I said, the Hellenic Israel Alliance and Israel, uh, Cyprus and Greece have a, a strong bond now. And I think that we played somewhat of a role there uh, with regard to the oil uh, exploration, uh, you know, better ties. And uh, again, they're helping out with the sending over the tourists to, to Greece. Uh, but uh, no, the state, you're, you're correct. The State Department has not done enough. Uh, Turkey gets away with so much over the years uh, because of their strategic location. But enough is enough, uh, and, and that's why this is so important to the U.S. as well, to have three strong allies uh, in, in Greece, Cyprus, uh, and Israel, 
Uh, as you know, they, they haven't been uh, on good terms with Israel either lately. So, you know, the negotiations uh, should go on, uh, but we have to, we, we are the ones that can uh, go a long way in getting this done, and it's very unfair. I was over there, I was in Cyprus in October, as I said, we were over in the region, uh, and uh, Turkey had invaded the EZZ, as you know, the economics, exclusive economic zone, EEZ, exclusive economic zone. Uh, and that was a bilateral agreement between Cyprus and Israel, uh, and Turkey did not recognize that. And I had the State Department on record a couple of years ago uh, when I talked to the Assistant Secretary of State in a Foreign Affairs Subcommittee, and I said, doesn't two sovereign nations, do two sovereign nations have a right to agree on an exclusive economic zone uh, without the interference the illegal, I might add, interference of Turkey. And uh, they said, yes, Mr. Villarakis, yes. And I had to press them very many, a couple times, but they said, yes, they do have that right. Uh, when I was over there, Turkey invaded the EEZ, uh, and, uh, and our, our statement was not as strong. Our State Department statement was not as strong as it should have been. Uh, but uh, I was there to represent the United States, and I strengthened it a little bit, Dimitri. Uh, but they're still there. They're supposed to leave. Uh, this is the second invasion. I call it an invasion. Uh, and uh, they're supposed to leave on April 7th. Uh, if they leave, the negotiations will, st will continue. Uh, right now, they're on pause. President Anastasiadis did the right thing. Why should he negotiate? Uh, with Turkey when they're violating our, our space, uh, Cyprus's space. Uh, so uh, at this particular time with the, with the ships. So uh, in any case, uh, you're right. We need to put more pressure on Turkey. Look what's happening with uh, the Patriarchio. They don't recognize our patriarch. Uh, they, as a, they recognize him as a lo local clergyman. Uh, our scholi at Hauke, the seminary, has been closed for 42 years for no reason. Uh, so uh, in any case, I'm glad that you have this program because, and I'm glad, thank you for having me on thank you. as a guest because we need to let the, the young people, they need to be aware of these issues. And I think that they would be uh, very strong advocates of Greece and Cyprus uh, once they get educated on these issues. Not, not just Greek Americans, but uh, Philhellenes around the world. And I think it's uh, it's pretty clear that uh, Turkey has demonstrated that they're not a true ally of the United States uh, with their numerous human rights violations that they really haven't done much to to squelch lately and with the the war on ISIS or ISIL they have the capability to end it they have a, a good military it's in their backyard they could go in there and end the, the whole conflict and th they pretty much have demonstrated in some people's view that they're actually sympathizers to ISIS. It goes back to the point, why do we not force that issue of the illegal occupation of Cyprus? And we, we keep tiptoeing around hurting Turkey's feelings. Is it is this something that, that we can that's, continue that's to That strategy uh, concerned with uh, Turkey's feelings uh, it has not worked <laughs> uh, up to now. We've played that role for, for many years uh, and uh, it's, it has not been effective. So, you know, I think that, uh, uh, you know, that we need to do the right thing and stand by our, our true allies. And is there a strategic location in this day and age with modern technology? Is it, is it that big of an issue that we would sacrifice? Well, that's why we need friends in the region. And, uh, you know, the, this, this caucus, this coalition that we've created Greece, Cyprus, and Israel, and we've helped with that. Uh, it's very, very important to counteract uh, our so-called friends uh, in the region, and uh, you know Iraq as well. I mean, uh, I don't know what's going to happen with ISIS. And, uh, Iran now is is helping uh, defeat ISIS uh, in Iraq. That's not a bad thing. But then, what happens after we defeat ISIS? Is Iran going to take over Iraq? Uh, they're a big threat to, to the world, uh, to Israel or the United States, but the entire region. So uh, 
that's why we need strong allies in the region because you you can't count on countries like uh, you cannot count on countries like uh, Turkey. And, and as far as the uh, the exploration of natural gas over off the coast of uh, of Cyprus, they have uh, I guess an agreement with uh, with Israel. If uh, Turkey were to encroach upon that, do you think that the U.S. would step in? Yes, I think they would. I, I really do. And you know, it, it behooves uh, Turkey. To, to work with Cyprus and and uh, actually unite the the uh, country, uh, uh, unify the country, because uh, the the northern part of uh, Cyprus would benefit. Cyprus has already said the Republic of Cyprus has stated that the first five years of the the revenue coming from uh, from the oil will uh, benefit the the northern part of Cyprus. And I will tell you this: visiting uh, the churches. Uh, and the necrotafia, the cemeteries, uh, and visiting, uh, you know, again, uh, just the areas uh, on the north part, uh, those people are hurting. They're not being treated well by uh, mainland Turkey. Uh, so if, if it were, I believe that if it were up to the, the people over there uh, on the northern side of the Republic of Cyprus, uh, the residents there, I believe that they would want a united Cyprus, and I, I, w I would think that they would want to uh, to be uh, basically, uh, well, they get a lot of the benefits now, as you know, they get the health care, uh, and, uh, and they're treated very, very well. So uh, it behooves Turkey to, uh, to enc encourages, incentivizes them to, to agree with uh, Northern Cyprus uh, to unify the island. But uh, again, uh, the, if it were left up to uh, the so-called leaders of the north side, uh, I believe that there would be an agreement, but Turkey interferes every time, and it's, it's a real shame. So the income from the fossil fuels, from the nat natural gas, that's projected to go towards the northern well, side? Well, that was or? something that was put on the table by the Republic of Cyprus, by, I believe, by Nassasiades. But who would regulate that to make sure that it went to the northern well, side instead of the pockets of uh, it, it people was, in the mainland the, Turkey? The government, the current government, the Republic of Cyprus. Absolutely. Moving on to another subject here. I understand you're involved in many committees. Could you tell us what some of your latest ventures are concerning that? Well, I'm on the Energy and Commerce Committee. Uh, the subcommittees are health, very important telecommunications and uh, and I'm also on the it's called commerce manufacturing and trade subcommittee and I also serve on the veterans committee I'm the uh, vice chairman of the entire uh, veterans committee in the house and uh, veterans have always been my top priority in the Congress and uh, right now we're uh, my priority as far as veterans legislation is uh, we have the cover act and uh, we want to have every veteran have the opportunity to choose alternative therapies or complementary therapies. A lot of times they don't get the, with, with regard to PTS, the post-traumatic uh, uh, stress, uh, and, uh, and a TBI. And a lot of times this, these types of therapies are not available. So it's up to right now currently the VA decides whether you can have this uh, therapy, whether it's the art therapy, which is auxiliary resolution therapy, uh, uh, Sometimes it's as simple as actually giving the veteran uh, a service dog. You know, service dogs, animals are, are miracle workers. They really are. Absolutely. There was one uh, particular veteran that came up to me. And he was on 34 meds, and a nonprofit gave him a service dog, and uh, it turned his life around. He uh, Now he's on two meds, and one's a vitamin. Uh, so it's as simple as that, equine therapy. Uh, a lot of these therapies work. The veterans should have the choice because, and of course they're going to be evidence-based, but uh, within the VA, they only offer uh, a certain amount of therapy uh, and, you know, not one size fits all. So the veterans should have the choice and the VA should pay for that uh, kind of therapy, uh, whatever the, is effective. Of course it's going to be uh, evidence-based, but uh, this is a serious issue. And uh, the, the, the PTS is, you know, we have veterans that uh, they haven't been treated. Uh, they were in Vietnam. 
and this just it's unacceptable as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I mean, agree. Go completely. back to World War II in some cases. So uh, we need to learn our lesson. We have to treat our veterans. Uh, they're our heroes, and they put their lives on the line for us. So uh, again, uh, you know, this is something that I feel very strongly about, uh, and I'll continue to work on this until. Uh, until the bill actually passes the House and the Senate. We got a hearing uh, last October, and, and I believe we'll get, to, we'll get it out of committee on the floor before the end of the year. I got to keep pressing, though. Excellent. I also am on the Energy and Commerce Committee, as I said, in uh, health care. I'm involved in this 21st Century Cures uh, initiative, and I have actually five initiatives in the bill, and it's a bipartisan bill. Uh, which is great. When you have Democrats and Republicans on board, uh, it's usually a good bill. And, uh, and what we're trying to do is uh, have medications available at a low cost uh, for people that have chronic diseases, but also uh, life-threatening diseases. And uh, sometimes the FDA gets in the way. Uh, the science is here. Uh, a lot of times, because of the approval process, uh, people have to go outside the country to get the therapy. For example, there's a gentleman that I met with uh, from Northwest Hillsborough County, and uh, he has uh, ALS, and uh, he's lived for over 10 years. The life, ex the life expectancy for uh, an ALS patient is two years. He goes to China and gets the stem cell, Dobsinfel, since spent, excuse me, stem cell therapy. Uh, and, but guess what? It costs one hundred twenty thousand dollars every time he calls. Who can afford that? He's very fortunate because he's had some help from friends as well. Uh, but uh, there's no reason why we can't have that type of therapy here in the United States. There, are, there are patients that are taking drugs off label, uh, meaning that uh, that the drug was approved by the FDA for a specific purpose. However, they've experimented, and uh, you know they're they're. Their doctor, their physician will prescribe the drug, but it's you're kind of gambling. Uh, you know, you're taking a little bit of a risk as to whether it works or not. Well, you know what? Why can't we get these drugs repurposed for that specific uh, illness, and 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 the dosage as well, so that the people can don't have to experiment. Uh, I met with a patient from South Florida uh, just the other day, who is terminally ill. And uh, she was taking, she was trying to get this drug. She did some research on her own. She doesn't have a medical background, but she did some research on her own with regard to this drug because nothing was helping her. So she asked uh, a private practitioner to prescribe it for her, and he said no. So she said, okay, well, I'm gonna go find someone else that will. She went to the University of Miami. Uh, it was prescribed, that particular drug, off-label again. Okay, so she was taking a little bit of a risk, but she's willing to take that risk. Uh, and guess what? He prescribed it. She took the medication. She's doing wonderfully. Excellent. But, you know, how many people, uh, first of all, you know, with everybody's busy these days, and how many people would have the time to do the research and, uh, and make the effort that she did? Uh, and, and, you know, she's helping me pass my, my legislation now so we can uh, make it accessible, but also affordable. Because see, once it's approved by the FDA, uh, it will be covered by insurance. Will this be incorporated as part of the Affordable Care Act? Well, no, it'll be, uh, it's different. something called the 21st Century Cures Initiative. And we have other initiatives too, uh, that, that just make a lot of sense. But again, you gotta really, your heart's gotta be uh, behind it. You gotta have that, that persistence there. And I get that from, from my Greek background, uh, and, and never give up, because uh, that's why you run for Congress, to make a difference in, in people's lives. Very, very nice, and uh, on a lighter side here, at many of the Greek events that I perform at, I see you dancing, you're very good at it, especially with the Kalimniko. <laughs> uh, what are some of the other things that you like to do in your spare time for fun? Well, I, I spend a lot of time uh, with the kids. Uh, I have four sons, and uh, we do a lot of, a lot of uh, going, go to sporting events. Uh, and uh, I'm not the best athlete in the world, but I play with them uh, football, 
a little baseball, whatever they want to do. Uh, it's very important that, uh, that we spend t quality time with the kids. And, uh, you know, I'm not there every day because I'm in D.C. during the week. I come home every weekend. Uh, but uh, at least there's quality time there. But, uh, yeah, the Greek dancing is a passion of mine. Uh, I, I remember watching my, my grandfather. He died when I was 13, but he was a good the Greek dancer. And uh, I observed... Uh, I observed the, the moves and uh, not, not necessarily the steps because, uh, you know, when you have it in your heart, uh, especially if you have a couple of drinks, uh, you just do what you want. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's just something that, uh, I don't know, I, I, just, I just love it. And as a matter of fact, I love listening to Greek music. Um, I, uh, when I get stressed out, uh, particularly during the campaign, because you know what campaigns can be like. I, I put put on the nisiotica, and uh, and that that usually calms me down. It does a trick. So uh, I love everything Greek. Uh, it's just uh, something very special, and uh, we have to pass that on to to our children. Uh, it's so very important. The, our identity is extremely important. We're very fortunate to be here in this great country uh, called America to have the opportunities we have. No one, nowhere else in the world do we have these opportunities. Uh, but you know what? Uh, part of being American is keeping your, your culture, your heritage, your identity. And uh, we have an obligation, a duty to pass that on to our children. Otherwise, it's lost forever, and that's a real shame. Absolutely. Yeah. And Dimitri, you are terrific. And we have a lot of common interests, of course. I'm not, I can't sing. I wish I could. I have a, a cousin that's a singer in Greece, Valandi, and, uh, and I keep up with him a lot. We, we talk a couple times a month, uh, you know, email, and when I went over there, I, I spent some time with him. Uh, and, uh, but uh, again, uh, I can't sing, uh, but I can dance, and, uh, and I love listening to the music as well. Well, I, I can't dance, so I can kind of balance us <laughs> out there. Yeah, would make a good team. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> As I had mentioned before, I've had Gus's son, Manoli, as a student, and Gus has come into my classroom at Carwise Middle School several times and has done just a fantastic lesson on how a bill becomes a law. What suggestions would you have to, to the youth? How, how do you think we should go about uh, getting them interested? And in Well, teaching? I think that uh, they should get involved uh, in, uh, you know, if they, if they care for a particular candidate, uh, Democrat, Republican, whatever, uh, they should get involved in the, the community, but get involved in the race. Uh, they can also intern for members of Congress, uh, state legislators, to learn uh, the process. Uh, I think as Greek Americans, uh, again, it's in our blood. It comes natural to us. Um, however, we don't have enough Greek Americans in, uh, in public office, uh, we we have three in the United States uh, House of Representatives. At one time, we had six. Uh, Olympia Slow, uh, Snow re retired last year, so we have no m members of the United States Senate, uh, and and that's a shame. The Greeks are so very uh, successful in so many fields, uh, whether it's journalism, whether it's uh, business, uh, you know, law. Uh, members of the medical profession, what have you. I think we need people uh, in, in, in government. Uh, first of all, uh, because they would make good uh, representatives, uh, but also we want them to, to help, uh, you know, our, our mother countries, uh, Cyprus and Greece. And whatever you do for Cyprus and Greece uh, benefits the United States of America, in my opinion. So. Uh, you know, I would encourage them to do it. It's a tremendous sacrifice, but it's it's an honorable profession. You hear about uh, some of the, the, the bad apples, but uh, there are some good people uh, in public office. And, uh, you know, I again, uh, it's, it's tough because uh, you get a lot of scrutiny. Uh, the scrutiny is, is, is difficult. You, you're basically in, uh, you live in, uh, you know, fishbowl. You know, and whatever you do, your life is public, what have you. Uh, but you know what? It's worth it. If you can make a difference, like I said, with the, the, uh, the health care, that's so very important. It affects so many families. Uh, and, and then, of course, uh, 
you want, we want to help out, uh, you know, Elada in, in Kipro. Uh, again, because uh, it's in our hearts, but also because it's uh, the right thing to do. And, uh, you know, religious freedom throughout the world. Uh, who better knows? Now, of course, you know, we've lived here in this great country, but our, our forefathers uh, lived under the Ottoman Empire for over 400 years. I just uh, met a, a gentleman uh, yesterday from Tampa, and uh, I mean, do we think that this this just uh, has begun the radical uh, Islam? Uh, I just met a gentleman from Tampa just the other day, uh, and he told me that his both his grandfathers they lived in Constantinople, and both grandfathers were beheaded, oh. and the, and the Yayadis were nowhere to be found. They couldn't find them, so they lost their Yayadis too. Uh, his dad came uh, when he was 24 years old in 1912 to the U.S. But uh, so religious freedom uh, and, and uh, freedom of speech, we take it for granted over here, cause, but, but other countries do not have it. Uh, I, I do everything I can on behalf of the Coptic Christians in Egypt, uh, but all, all uh, religious minorities throughout the world. And I would not have that opportunity if I didn't uh, run for office. Uh, and you know, you only have so many uh, years in this world, and uh, and you've got to help others. That's what uh, Christo would want mm-hmm. for us to help others. Yeah. And you certainly have made very positive difference in our society. And I mean, it's it's evident with the overwhelming support that you have from the community, as well as each time the elections come around, it's it's really no contest. And, and this brings me to my, my next question. Uh, have you decided when you're going to form the uh, Exploratory Committee for the 2016 presidential election? <laughs> I'm very happy with what I'm doing <laughs> right now, uh, being a United States Congressman. But uh, more north of the city. I, I'm not going to run for president. but. Uh, you know, if there are opportunities out there where I can serve, uh, you know, in a higher role, uh, you know, certainly consider it. But I love what I'm doing right now, so uh, well, I, will, I, I plan I will to stick. With, out, I, but I was I plan to uh, stick with Congress for at least a few more years. Well, you're doing a great service Thank you. to our country, to our community, and especially the, the Greek community as well. So thank you very, very much for what you do. Christo, thank you. And thank, thank you, you for you. being pl- with us. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Dimitri. Our guest has been Congressman Gus Bilarakis here on WZIG.